Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Chris McGuire and I'm hosting today's LCR Tech Climbers List 2021. It's so nice to be back. I'll be honest, it's been a while. The shirt's a bit tighter, the suit's a bit more snug, but uh, it's great to be here today to celebrate the second time we've published the LCR Tech Climbers List. It's designed to celebrate the cream of the region's digital tech sector. I'd like to thank our sponsors and our partners, Virtuopo and Zoot, who are putting this event on, and our other sponsors, Growth Platform, Brabners, MSIF, Invest Liverpool and Gather. Give yourselves a virtual round of applause. I'd also like to, uh, to mention Business Cloud. We're the proud media partners of this event, and the event couldn't have happened without those clever people at Active Profile. So thank you very much to them as well. If you want to follow the conversation on Twitter, you can. The hashtag is hashtag LCR Tech Climbers, hashtag LCR Tech Climbers, and you can also comment on Slido. Lots of people are as well. I'm delighted to see Mo Aldalu in the audience as well. Mo, nice to see you as well. Now, a total of 45 companies have been included in two lists. It was a tough job trying to find those 45 companies because we had such a big entry, but we narrowed it down to 45. Before we see who's made which list, I'd like to show you this video. Now there are two lists today, the first is the ones to watch list and the second is the main LCR Tech Climbers list. The first video, as I mentioned before, is the ones to watch. Keep an eye on those as well, if there's a particular company that you like, make a note of it because I'll be coming back to that later. There's 20 names in total on that list and they're in alphabetical order. This isn't a ranking, it's not 1 to 20. Now many of those companies have recently introduced new products and we look forward to seeing their success in the future. Roll VT. Twenty ones to watch. Twenty businesses set for growth in 2021. Let's find out who they are. A2O Technology Group, providing technologies for weight reduction, operational efficiency, and CO2 emissions reduction. Leap by Agent Academy, an online learning platform providing skills needed for a career in marketing. Chasing the Stigma, a hub of hope app aiming to normalize and humanize mental health. Civsoft, an intelligent technology platform which automates the time-intensive manual recruiting processes. Damibu, a Liverpool-based digital technology studio dedicated to undertaking projects that provide a significant social value. DATP, a data insights platform which enables their clients to make quick decisions and actions from their own data, helping them create real value. DefProc, a team of engineers who help businesses build prototypes and test ideas for validity to make concepts a reality. DriverNet, a system that enables every type of mobile operation to get the basics right first time, every time to connect teams and customers together in smart, safe and secure ways. Hopsy, a B2B SaaS technology solution for operations and compliance management. IoT Horizon Limited, a system providing solutions for social distancing, asset tracking, preventative and condition monitoring, bespoke and off-the-shelf sensors and more. 
KRTS, a specialist service for the management of psychological trauma delivered globally to organizations and their employees. Life, Sofron Health Limited, a platform giving users access to an ecosystem of online resources that will nourish the health of their body, head and heart. Make Thread, a sustainable social commerce platform promoting independent designs by offering conscious, sustainably produced fashion with zero waste. Needle Smart, a market leading technology that heats hypodermic needles into a molten state prior to compressing it into a completely safe ball. PIN IoT, an end-to-end -end solution combining retrofitted tracking devices to containers, software designed specifically for the waste industry, and full life support that delivers a seamless adoption process. Quantum Science Limited, developing innovations to transform image sensors, how we detect diseases and clean water. Safe Steps, a falls prevention app designed to reduce the number of falls in care homes, hospitals and out in the community. Skyhook Games, a creative production house specialising in games development. Our Tribe, an online platform that simply allows our schools to search and book the best our tribers. WM Technologies Limited, a digital platform for the property buying and selling process through alignment, efficiency and commitment. Congratulations! Stay tuned for the reveal of this year's LCR Tech Climbers. Well, congratulations to all 20 companies. <coughs> Excuse me, congratulations to all 20 companies who made that list. Richly deserved as well, and ones that we think are definitely ones to watch. But which one of those 20 companies do you think is the one to watch? We've got a special audience poll where we're asking you to vote on the one of those 20 companies you think we should be keeping an eye on above all the others. Now, I've got to warn you, there's no monetary prize at stake, just the glory of being the audience winner as well. So if you want to pick one of those 20 winners, we'll, re uh, we'll actually we're going to uh, name the winner of that poll after I've spoken to uh, three of the companies who've been included on that list, starting with David Harper of Shy Hook Games. Now, David, I hope you're there. Can you hear me OK, David? David, I can see you. I can't hear you. Um, I don't know whether or not you've got your microphone turned on or off. This was working. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. I do oh, do... Yes. I do do sign language as well, so you don't have to worry if all else had failed, David. Now, as well as helping other people create their perfect computer game, you're also uh, working on your own and developing your own IP, which is really important, which is one of the things the judges were really impressed with. Just tell us about that. Yes, so um, as well as helping lots of uh, games companies around the country, big and small, we're taking the, the learnings from that and our 25 year, years in the industry to start our own game. Uh, we're backed by a leading UK publisher, and it's due out on PC and console June this year. Now, you've, you've grown your business during the pandemic, which is fantastic. You had five staff at the start. You've now got 11. You work mm -hmm. with around 40 contractors. What's your ambition? Uh, more of the same, to be honest. We're in a very fortunate position at the minute where the games industry has been... Uh, pretty robust in this last year. We've had one of the best years to the end of 2020. We've already this year surpassed our 2020 targets. Um, we're looking to build on our service side to help more clients around the country, as well as bringing more IP to market going forwards. Now, you're a business that employs 75% of your staff uh, work remotely. Liverpool's got a proud history of gaming. Do you think that it's a sector that Liverpool City Region can really capitalise on going forward? I do indeed, yeah. I think uh, events like this are great as well for bringing to the fore what's happening in this region as a whole. We've got, um, like I said, from here to Manchester and across the region in general, some great companies bring in a lot of value to the region and it's great to see it really being backed and supported in this way today. David, congratulations. Well done to you. I'm now going to come to uh, our next uh, company on the list, which is DefProc, uh, run by a husband and wife team. It's an engineering firm run by Jen and Pat Fenner. And if everything goes according to plan, Jen Fenner, her face will appear on that screen. Jen, how are you? Hi. Um, <laughs> I think that's the wrong person. <laughs> uh, Jen, when we spoke yesterday, you were homeschooling and you were getting quite stressed. Um, Jen, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Jen, can I just say, in the space of 10 seconds, you've completely changed appearance. Um, <laughs> you look completely different to the other person who was on there, but the jokes are still the same, so hopefully you didn't hear the first <laughs> attempt at a joke. When I spoke to you yesterday, you were homeschooling, and it was quite stressful. How are you today? 
Um, we're doing okay today. Um, yeah, I, I think it's every day as it comes at the moment. And uh, yeah, they've done some work, so that's a bonus. Um, and that's all we can hope for. <laughs> yeah, if, if after about six minutes of this conversation, it looks like I'm in a trance, it's because of the pendulum on that clock has turned me, has uh, <laughs> got me in a trance. Now, in terms of DefPoc, you run it with your husband, Pat. It's an engineering business and you help turn people's ideas into prototypes. That's what you do, basically, isn't it? Yes, yeah. So we work with um, companies across uh, the country, really, and basically bring their kind of ideas to life. So if they've got an idea and they haven't got the skills in house, then we're able to um, take that from first principles and then kind of build it out into a prototype that they can then go and trial with um, their customers and get feedback. And, and then we make iterations and then it can go on to be manufactured. So, uh, so yeah, so that's it in kind of a, a bit of a nutshell. Now, one of the things that impressed the judges, if you created a device called Push to Talk, as the names, the names or the clues in the name, you push to talk, which is designed to combat isolation, which has been a real problem during the pandemic as well. Just tell us a little bit about that, if you would. So the service is designed, uh, so the device itself is designed to go into um, people's homes, particularly those who don't have um, broadband or you know or the internet um in their area or you know indeed their home and particularly those who haven't got um ipad smartphones those sorts of things so basically they can press a button and it uses um new technology so long range wide area network technology and it means that they they're able to press that button connect to the internet and then they can have a phone call with somebody else who was also connected who's also pressed their button as well and then they can talk for as long as they like and um, and then if they want to press the button again and kind of have another conversation all without kind of leaving their home now for obvious reasons this is a virtual event you know we'd like to have done it in a big in a big space with a live audience that we couldn't do that you know so thanks for allowing us into your house at the moment which room are we in at the moment can i ask are we in the classroom uh, we're in the, well, ca classroom slash kitchen. <laughs> right, because your kids are looking at that clock, they're probably thinking to themselves, when's it going to be the end of school? I'm trying not to look at that clock because the pendulum is so annoying. Um, you've received, <laughs> you've received, we can laugh about it now, we can laugh about it now, don't you worry. You've received future innovation funding to improve the push to talk device. I know you've had some very constructive conversations with local authorities in North Wales. What's the plan for 2021 for DEFPROC? Um, so we're going to redevelop the device to use, um, so as I said, the, de the device uses um, long range wide area network um, technology and there is also another which is a long range, it's like Wi-Fi but for a really long distance um, and then there is also another technology that is available more kind of nationwide um, called um, narrowband IoT and it means that more people will then have access to the to the device and then with North Wales we're going to be conducting some trials with them and um, particularly with Combat, Conway and Embraisha they're um, they're setting up a whole new um, system for their carers and giving them the push to talk buttons to try out and then hopefully kind of going forward it will then be a much longer running um, service for them um, just as well. Just a final question. I was very interested. You've been running the business now with your husband for more than a decade. But before you became a tech entrepreneur and you went into engineering, you were actually an artist, weren't you? Yes. A very talented. Yeah. Probably, probably made clocks, I would imagine. But um, what do you think <laughs> of um, what do you think of uh, Liverpool City Region's tech credentials, Jen? Um, I think it's a really good, a really good area. Um, there's, we we always, to be honest, the most um, kind of people who come to us for their um, to develop their technology are from the city region and um, so we get a lot of business from all all over the city region and I think there is a real um, kind of I suppose energy here where people want to invent things they want to be doing new things there's lots of problems that need to be solved and I think um, lots of companies really want to try and face some of those challenges and um, and yeah, and just you know, utilize, utilizing the 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 skill the skills I think that are here because there are a lot of innovative thinkers I think in like Liverpool and the city region generally. So I do think technology has got has got a really good home here. 
Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Congratulations to you, Jen, for making the ones to watch list. But we can't hang about. On to our uh, next company, who were uh, also featured in the ones to watch list. It's an old favourite of ours, uh, Make Thread. Uh, I'm joined by one of the co-founders, Sarah O'Brien. Sarah, I hope I can see you. Sarah, you know, you look very familiar. You look like Jen, who I just spoke to, actually. Um, but uh, Sarah, it's, it's worth saying, actually, you co-founded the business with Katie, um, uh, who unfortunately can't be here today because she's got COVID, hasn't she? Or she's recovering from COVID. Yeah, she held it for a long time, so she's been sort of out of it for about three weeks now. So, yeah, she's, she's getting there. Katie, I'm absolutely sure you're watching this. Get well soon. That's the message from everyone here. In terms of your business, you're a mixture, really, of e-commerce, social media, and, and got a Kickstarter element as well. Essentially, the way Make Thread work is they allow people to make their own clothes, don't they? They do, yeah. So we, um, we provide a sustainable, um, a sustainable solution, really, to how fashion is consumed. So it's like a risk-free platform where designers can come along, design their own garments, and then we make them for them. Mm. What would you recommend for me? I mean, obviously, somebody in my stature, what sort of clothes would look good on me? Because I've not found anything that looks good on me yet. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure, you, I'm sure your wife will tell you. <laughs> OK. Um, now, um, Make Thread <laughs> place a lot of uh, weight on being ethical and sustainable, don't they? That's really important, actually, because lots of millennials, when they make a buying decision, they, they tend to go with, with sustainable and ethical businesses as well. Just tell us about that decision that you took at Make Thread. Yeah, well, it's really it's to try and combat. So the amount of landfill, so it's like 350,000 tonnes of um, fashion goes to landfill every year. Um, and the big companies, they tend to overproduce by about 40 percent. So we thought, right, OK, all this is going to go to landfill. It's going to be incinerated. So it's not only about the product being sustainable. It's about trying to find a solution to how we consume. And therefore, we only manufacture when there's a demand. So we don't hold stock and therefore we don't send anything to landfill or sale or anything like that. You've, um, you're working with a lot of influence. You've appeared uh, on, on uh, the one show this morning. You even appeared in Business Cloud as well. You launched a, an initiative called Design for Kindness to support independent designers during COVID, which is so important as well because, you know, you've given them a platform quite literally. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we, um, so we obviously were one of the ones to watch nominations for the Tech Climbers in the end of 2019. Um, and then obviously then we, um, we built the platform like a, a, an MVP and then COVID hit. So we thought, OK, we've got to do something about this. And we thought we've got an opportunity. We've got a platform that's ready to go. There's people being made redundant, you know, furloughed. So we started Design for Kindness, which was all about um, people selling their designs on T-shirts. And then we donated all of our profits to the National Emergencies Trust. And we saw a huge, huge uptake. So we, as you say, we were featured on this morning. Um, you know, the likes of Fern Cotton wore some of our um, T-shirts. It was hugely, hugely supported. Mm. And then since then, we've been um, really lucky that a lot of the influencers who actually wore the T-shirts have actually approached us. So we're just at the, in the process at the moment of launching our next collection. Um, and we've got six influencers who are going to be launching with us on the 8th of February. No, fantastic. It's, not, it's so important to not only do the right thing, but uh, you know, to be seen to be doing the right thing as well. Final question from me. Um, you've received some money from the Future Innovation Fund. How would you describe the health of Liverpool's tech sector? I mean, the Liverpool itself is such a community and, and tech's always been there, but I think it's probably not been as recognised. I think people always think of Manchester as being more of the tech central. Um, but we're based in the Baltic and the Baltic is, as I say, is like a community. It's full of innovative entrepreneurs, you know, people who think differently. Um, so I think Liverpool is definitely a city to watch on the map. No, thank you very much. And uh, congratulations to you. Well done. Um, just a reminder, you can follow the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag, hashtag at LCR Tech Climbers, hashtag at LCR Tech Climbers, just proving that I can uh, multi-skill. Gavin has just posted a message as well, congratulating some of the companies who've made that first ones to watch list as well. Lots of companies are taking part as well. I can't wait to see what Gavin's wearing today. He is the master of fashion, as we know. Um, but there's some great messages on there. If you want to comment and congratulate some of those companies, use the hashtag, hashtag LCR Tech Climbers. Now, I asked a question earlier. I said, which one of those ones to watch did you think 
was the one to watch above all the others. And we've done an exclusive poll and Piers Dryden of Brabner's is going to reveal the winner who doesn't win anything other than the glory of the ones to watch audience poll. Piers, how are you? Piers, I can't hear you, so I can think, I'm just trying to lip read what you said, but because it's such an important vote, it's so important that they hear you announce the winner. So uh, Piers Dryden from uh, Brabner's, the winner of the ones to watch audience poll is right now i don't want to did anybody hear that did anybody hear that because i didn't hear that Piers, unfortunately um you know and i don't know if everybody else here but that's the great fun of these events as well you know that's the great fun because you don't necessarily yeah okay now going to try it I'm again afraid I don't ah think. no Piers, Piers, Piers. What we'll do is when we sell this to Sky TV tonight and they show the edited highlights, you'll just see you announce the winner. So Piers from Brabner, it's lovely to see you. You're looking fantastic, as always. Um, who is the winner of the Ones to Watch audience poll? Uh, Chris, I'm afraid uh, I haven't got that information. Oh, right. That was a big build-up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big build-up, wasn't it? Um, Piers, I'll tell you what we'll do. I will announce the winner. They're going to tell me the winner. Um, but, but just from your point of view at Brabner's as well, you know, you wanted to get involved in this because you're a big tech company. You're, you're a company with a big tech interest. Um, right, OK. Right. So I can announce who the winner is, um, but I'm going to wait a second because why, why, why did you want to get involved in this as a company, Brabner's? Well, we've, we've been um, sort of committed to, to the North West for... <laughs> over 200 years. Um, we've seen uh, a lot of excellent companies, tech companies all the way through. Um, uh, and, you know, I've got a particular interest, my team does as well. And, um, you know, it's such a great event. There's such good businesses, good companies um, in the region. And we just really want to celebrate mm -hmm. all of that and give as much support and promotion of, of it as we can. Yeah, uh, Piers, I'm going to whisper this to you quietly because I don't want to spoil the suspense. OK, so the winner of the voter, you know, from the audience is Danibu. So I want to come to you now oh. and I, I want to say to you, Piers from Brabners, the winner of the, uh, the audience poll for the one to watch is... Congratulations, it's Danibu. Oh, fantastic. Well done. Virtual round of applause. And thank you very much as well, Piers. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Thanks, thank David. you. Thank Thanks, you. Chris. I have to say there's a fantastic team working behind the scenes here as well and with these events when you're doing them virtually as well they never work according to plan but they never appear, they, uh, they never work quite the same as well when you're doing them in the flesh as well so have no problem at all and you've got me, you know, the, uh, the master of a comedy who can just seamlessly fill these gaps, do not worry at all. Now we've got 25 names in the main LCR Tech Climbers list and we're going to reveal them in two halves in alphabetical order. I should make the point they're not in any ranking at all, this isn't a 1 to 25, they're just in alphabetical order and these are the companies that we've chosen, the judges have chosen to be in the LCR Tech Climbers list 2020. Let's see the first half. Time to reveal the winners of LCR Tech Climbers 2021. 25 Liverpool City Region businesses have made this year's LCR Tech Climbers list. Let's find out who they are. The first set of companies to have made the list are... 3D Life Prints, a medical 3D printing provider of products and 3D design services. AskEddy, a school data management platform that works with businesses existing MIS to act on assessment and attendance data. Blink Solutions, a range of applications connecting businesses existing systems and data for a complete end-to-end -end business management solution. CGA Simulation, a provider of smart city resilience models and digital twin pattern of life simulations that test the safety of autonomous vehicle technology, validating the technology against a panoply of hazards and scenarios. CNC Robotics, providing automated solutions and robotic system integration. Collabco, a customizable dashboard that collect, display and push information from businesses' disparate IT systems. Cybertil, a cloud-based retail software solutions for charities, retailers and visitor attractions with fully integrated real-time EPOS and end-to-end -end retail management. eSign, a leading global provider of electronic signature solutions. Evoke Creative a platform and leading provider of digital signage and interactive kiosks. 
58. A free mobile platform giving job seekers and workers critical information and advice throughout recruitment and into work. High Impact Consultancy, providing strategic and innovative IT support, education and media services to schools and businesses across the UK and abroad. Immersive Interactive, the leading provider of fully interactive, immersive learning spaces in both education and emergency services sectors. Liverpool Chirochem, an international chemistry-based CRO on a mission to accelerate the discovery and development of high-quality drugs. Fantastic, great video, great companies as well featured on that list as well. Just to give a shout out again to Damibu, who were the uh, audience choice for the ones to watch as well. Damibu is a consultancy and developer in the digital and creative industry that creates high quality, unique and on time mobile solutions and is also the audience choice for the ones to watch. Now, if everything goes according to plan, I'll be speaking to three businesses in the first section and four from the second of businesses that are featured on the ones on the, uh, the main LCR Tech Climbers list, starting with a company called Ask Eddie, and I'm hoping I'm going to be joining by Brendan Nell. Brendan, how are you? Hi, Chris. All good, thank you. You? Very, very good indeed, Brendan. Very good indeed. I didn't realise that you were in a box. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's I'm, a shed. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, you look, you're look. you a winner as far as we're concerned because you've made the LCR Tech Climbers list. You founded Ask Eddie in 2017 to help schools collect data and interpret it. Your wife is a teacher and you've worked in the sector for years. What problem is Ask Eddie trying to fix? Well, it's trying to make it's trying to deliver data to school leaders in a interactive um, dashboard uh, way uh, for them to interact with it um, a lot seamlessly than uh, spreadsheets or, or data stuck in in the MIS systems. Mm. And obviously, the schools are currently shut because of COVID nineteen. So you pivoted. You launched a platform called Six into Seven, which is to help pupils transitioning from Year Six to Year Seven. Just explain how that works. Um, so what what we discovered with our school leaders was the when they when sets were cancelled um, there was a huge gap in academic information not being available um, and working with leaders we found a way with our current platform pivoting in what we could do to deliver six into seven uh, which then transfers data from primary through to secondary quite seamlessly. Mm. Um, am I right in thinking as well? I do a little bit of research when I do events like this. Am I right in thinking? I don't want to embarrass you as well. There's a slight South African accent there. And would I be right in thinking that as a young Springbok, you once appeared in the national karate competition? Is that hey, right? That's right. Thank so you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you not tempted to like chop your way out of all that wood? <laughs> well, d just to share a, a story, we arrived in the UK in '89, and it, and. It, it was apartheid and sanctions at, at its highest. Um, and, and we were blocked. We weren't allowed in. So we had to get on a plane and head over to Europe. Right. OK. You didn't have to stay in a hotel for 14 days and like, self-isolate as well, <laughs> no, did you? It, it was jackets off on the, on the plane over to Europe. <laughs> well, we're, we're very glad, Brendan, they let you in. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here today talking about Ask Eddie. You employ, exactly. you, you employ nine full-time staff. You're looking to increase that. You want to hit half a million turnover this year. How big do you think Ask Eddie can become? Well, we, we see potential um, to be a 20, 30 man business in Liverpool. That's a short answer as well, actually. Um, don't wait. When I look down at my uh, questions, that's when you carry on talking. But don't worry as well. Don't worry as well. Just, it doesn't matter. Um, you're, you were on the ones to watch list, but obviously you've, you've been promoted this time from 2019 to 2021. You're on the main LCR tech climbers list. That must mean a lot to you as well. But what do you think of Liverpool's tech sector generally? <coughs> We love being in Liverpool. Um, it, it's such a vibrant community, and I think that the support services offered, it, offered especially through Gather, Gather at the moment, have been superb. Um, the the availability of of resource and and um, smart technology um, people entering the sector is a, again one of the key um, factors of the attraction to Liverpool and living here as well. It's been a major benefit. Listen, congratulations to you, Brendan, as well, um, for making the LCI Tech Climbers list 2021. I'll let you out your shed now as I go to our next company who's featured in the uh, the list, which I'm delighted to say is uh, CNC Robotics. I'm going to be joined by Philippa Glover. What room in the house, Philippa, are you in or are you at the office? 
I'm in the office. Oh, congratulations to you. It's a very happy looking office, I have to say. You know, the uh, very colourful. Um, now, I don't want to cause an embarrassment, Philippa, but I tend to, more often than not to myself than anybody else. But am I right in thinking that when you met David Attenborough, you were so overcome, you started to cry? I did, I did. Um, it's quite embarrassing, that fact, isn't it? I should never have actually told you that when you eked it out of me. But, no, you know, no. it's someone that I absolutely admire and respect and... You know, I just completely got overcome with emotion. Okay, so so if anyone you who knows me knows that that probably can happen quite easily. No, well, so so you only get emotional for people you respect. Is that right? Uh, I should be okay. No. I should be okay then, Philip. But don't worry. <laughs> I don't expect any emotion for the next uh, couple of minutes. Um, you know, CNC Robotics was founded by husband and wife team Jason and uh, Medina Barker in 2010. In simple terms, you turn robots into milling machines, don't you? Yes, we do. Yeah, and and much more now. So we so we also do quite a bit of work in the in the three D printing space. So turning robots into giant three D printers um, and and everything in between. Okay, and where are you based? So we're based in Aintree, opposite the racecourse, mm. um, up in kind of Bootle Bootle mm. Way. Okay. Now you grew your turnover last year by fifty percent to, to two million, which is a phenomenal achievement given the given the circumstances of what we've got. And I think it's so important as well. You know, I work as a business journalist as well, and you see all this negative news, but there's so many positive stories out there if we can just shine a light on it, which is the reason why it's so glad to do an event like the LCR Tech Climbers. But what do you put your success down to from last year? So I, I think the key thing as a business is that we really focus on what we're really good at. And what we're really good at is providing robotic um, machining cells. Um, and that has been able to kind of be used across all sectors and all industries. So while some areas have seen quite a sharp kind of reduction, we've seen growth in other areas. Um, and through that kind of focus on kind of our core capability, we were able to really strategically continue to drive the business forward through strong marketing and sales activity um, and the, the network that we represent. And, you know, I suppose Liverpool City Region is part of that and part of the reason why we've been able to continue to be to be strong and, and grow despite the challenges that we've all faced over the past year. Yeah, and in terms of Liverpool City Region, how, how important do you think that is, being based in Liverpool City Region, is to the success of your business? Yeah, so Liverpool is fundamental to us. So, you know, there are so many people that um, are amazing at the growth platform and the combined authority who absolutely have your back. You know, they're there really to support and encourage and drive businesses forward. Um, you know, we're really lucky that Medina um, Barker, who's one of the, the directors and owners of CMC Robotics, sits on the making it board and um, part of Liverpool City Region, which is fundamental to really supporting and driving the manufacturing and engineering sector. Um, and I work really closely with a, with a number of the people in Liverpool City Region and now with a peer network just to really help drive and support other businesses within the area. Um, there is so much talent and so much passion for you know, the, the, the tech community and the manufacturing and engineering community that um, is un, yeah, unbelievable. And, you know, we, we're very, very lucky to be part of it and really proud to be part of Liverpool City Region and, and to be able to kind of showcase the amazing talent that we have here and be able to continue to grow and offer, you know, um, really interesting employment opportunities for people within the region. Yep. And a final question as well. I mean, you mentioned the word showcase. How important is it for events like LCR Tech Climbers to showcase companies like yours? And what does it mean for a company like yours to be included in the LCR Tech Climbers list 2021? Oh, it's 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 amazing. So, you know, we're, we're a small um, family owned business and, you know, to be able to be recognised as one of the, the leaders within the field and, and also the leaders within the region, you know, it is, it's just absolutely fantastic. You know, I'm really, really proud. I'm really, really proud of what we've achieved. I'm really proud of the team. Um, and, you know, it means an awful lot. And I think as as a region, we've got to continue to celebrate and tell our story. Um, and we need, you know, those in Westminster, I would say as well, yeah. to understand the talent and the potential that the region has got and that we need further investment in, in the infrastructure to continue to, to encourage and drive, you know, economic development of the region, which is fundamental to, you know, the growth and, um, and employment opportunities that, that are that we need to create for, for our young people. 
Well, absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us from Aintree as well. Going to come on to our next company. Um, Alan Thompson runs High Impact Consultancy. Um, Alan Thompson is going to join us in a second. I should just say that uh, Gavin Shower of Mashbow has, has actually posted a picture of himself in what he's wearing at the moment. Um, you might want to look at it after the watershed, but it looks like he's got a tea cosy on his head. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Alan Thompson of High Impact Consultancy. Now, you're a character, actually. Um, I'm always interested and always slightly worried, actually, when people join us from their homes and you don't ever know what's going to be on the shelves in the background, you know. But that running, that running machine, is that just for show or is that a real machine that you use? No, it's one of the 3D printed ones that your previous guest <laughs> printed out for me. It doesn't actually work at all. So. Okay. No, I, it, it is my attempt to some lockdown fitness, yeah. And the reason, yeah, you, yeah. the reason you do this for, of course, is because fitness is very important to you, Alan, because you've never been afraid to take a risk. And, uh, and I'm told on good authority that you've applied that you're, you're going to take part in the clip around the world race in 2023, despite the fact you've never sailed a yacht before. That's right. Never, never sailed a yacht in my life and uh, decided that as next year the, uh, the, the, the clip around the world race starts, uh, it would be a good time to, to try something new. I'm not going to do the whole world. Uh, save that for another day, but just do a few months of sailing from Seattle to New York and then back to the UK. So, uh, yeah, it's something I'm very excited about, but I will need to get fit and, uh, of course, learn to sail, which is why I do have 12 months to, uh, to get up to speed. No, absolutely, absolutely, and good luck to that as well. Now, uh, you, you were a teacher for 10 years before launching the High Impact Consultancy after recognising a gap in the market. What problem is the High uh, Impact Consultancy trying to fix? Uh, so back when we started the company, the, the problem it wasn't really a problem, it was an opportunity that suddenly technology was becoming a lot more accessible to schools. Uh, prices had dropped, you know, even rubbish digital cameras were over £100 each at the time. This is long before Wi-Fi in classrooms or iPads or anything like that, so going back sort of 10, 15 years. Um, so the, the opportunity was that technology was becoming much more accessible. Kids were having it in their homes and, and the, the bar was raised with the expectation that children had of the use of technology. Uh, and schools needed to catch up and and actually what one of the things was we didn't want it to become a gimmick we didn't want it to be something that was just seen as a bit of fun in the classroom we realized as educators the power of the the technology um to, to use that to enrich and enhance teaching and learning in all areas not just in tech but in pe and re and geography and science and, and every area using technology could enrich and enhance um, so it was an opportunity and schools needed that help um, from people who understood teaching we're passionate about tech, we're creative and arty and all of the things that we have as a company. So uh, it, was a, it was a great start for us to, 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 to launch into uh, the area we were most comfortable with, which was the classroom. And of course, as you said yourself, since then, we've um, moved more into to corporate as, as well as obviously education still, but very much in corporate as well, working with some, some big global clients. With well, I'm going to touch on... Media. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the 3D tours that you do in a second, but there's one thing that caught my eye. You do a lot of work to support the schools, you know, uh, and you've launched a uh, online curriculum platform called The Host. Tell us about that. Yeah, so basically it started because we got a lot of international interest in our education work. Uh, the Times Ed supplement wrote a little bit about us and we were invited to speak at events all over the world in India and Australia and so on. Um, and we got quite a lot of global interest and it meant flying staff out to Malta and Gozo and around the world, which was great for the staff. Obviously, no one's going to complain, but uh, it did mean that it was quite um, heavy on on getting people on the ground in these areas to be in the schools face to face and that's how the business started with a very face to face offering so we always wanted to come up with something that put all of our expertise uh, online not just in a website but in a very interactive environment where consultants our staff could be available to to speak face to face or to run webinars and seminars and have online tutorials and things and assessments and all these things that were there for for teachers so not for the kids but for, for the staff who wanted to develop their own uh, professional development elements as well mm. um, so that was something we'd always wanted to do but never been able to because we were too busy getting into schools and flying around the world to look after schools and education and then lockdown came so uh, it was always ready to go and we just decided to pull the trigger on it in March of last year and we spent uh, the whole year with support from LCR Activate as well who uh, kindly funded us with some of the market analysis that we wanted to do um, so we we got it off the ground and the host which is the high impact online and support host there you go okay. um so we've got that on, on board now and uh, online now and people are, are ready to we launch on monday actually so very excited about that 
Well, well, I thought I was the only host today, but it turns out there's two hosts. Um, there now, you, you recognised you recognise an opportunity around multimedia, and you offer 3D tours. Um, I mean, you've worked with a lot of uh, a lot of you know gyms. You know, I know you've worked with the Nuffield as well to show the social distancing, so people are nervous about going back and see the whole 3D tours. I think you're working with you do a 3D tour at Twickenham as well. I mean, you're working with some big blue chip companies, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, there's the, the the people are ready now. I mean, we've been doing this for the last five years, the 3D tour offer, making this uh, what is a very physical space that people can visit, like Liverpool Football Club or Twickenham or a Tommy Hilfiger retail outlet or whatever, all these places that people can phys physically visit and putting them into an online environment. Um, but never have we needed that more since lockdown. And so a lot of companies and, and sports and hospitality and places that are now closed or you know, in, back in March were closing down, realised that, that this was the opportunity to to put themselves in a very, to, to use this technology. It's so en engaging and, and immersive that you can, you can take these places. And then other people saw it for uh, staff training as well. So, you know, you've got staff working at home and how do you do an induction typically a lot of businesses like we we went down to harrods to talk to them about how they do staff training and it's the way it's been done for 30 40 years like 30 people sit in a room and there's a powerpoint at the front and you listen to that for two hours and that's your training uh, well that's not going to be an option to have people crammed into classrooms anymore so we came up with the idea of using 3d experiences just through an ipad or your phone and just being able to walk around and, and access your training through the virtual digital environment so you click on something and it trains you in how to use that or trains you in, in you, know, you, you click on something and a video starts and it's your line manager explaining health and safety or whatever so virtual induction as well as the more sort of exciting gimmicky thing that people do where you oh look at this it's nice and pretty it's actually a really powerful tool for, for staff induction uh, and it's things that people will continue to use long after lockdown because why wouldn't you train someone on the on their sofa at home on their phone before they come into work the next day rather than having to try and deliver cpd in, in the environment uh, Alan, absolutely fantastic as well. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to, uh, before we just start the second video, one of the nice things about Alan's business as well, I mean, it's doing 2.6 million turnover, took on seven staff last year as well during, uh, you know, during the whole pandemic as well. And there's lots of stories like that out there with companies in Liverpool doing amazing things. So thank you very much to Alan. Um, we're now going to see the second half of the LCR Tech Climbers List 2021. As before, it's in alphabetical order. This is not a ranking. Here are the second set of companies to have made the list. Medallia Living Lens, a video insight platform to capture, analyze and share video feedback. MGISS, delivering a range of geospatial solutions and services that help businesses capture, analyze, visualize and inform using spatial data. MSight, a digital platform changing the way construction manages its workforce. Orca, world leaders in health app reviews and prescription services. Parent apps, school apps that provide swift and effective communication with parents. Premier Epos, an electronic point of sale company. Ruler Analytics, a visitor level analytics product that tracks customer journeys, conversions, phone calls and companies looking at your site. Sky Medical Technology, developers of bioelectronic devices to prevent and treat a range of acute circulatory conditions. SupplyWell, an online staffing platform to help schools reduce staff absence and save money. Sys Group, a leading UK managed IT services and cloud hosting provider. Ticker, an app that lets you invest in companies making a positive impact. VTime, a free to play virtual reality and augmented reality social network. Thank you to all of this year's entries. Don't forget to download this year's report. Go to techclimbers.co.uk to get your copy. Well, congratulations to all 25 companies who've been included on that list as well. Fantastic. It was really hard, the judges said, to narrow it down to 25 because there are so many good companies, but 25 have made the final list as well. Just remember, you can follow the conversation on Twitter at uh, LCR Tech Climbers. Um, I'm just noticing as well, Gavin Sharrock as well and Nikki Gervin are currently talking all things fashion. That's Gavin's fashion as well. Um, we've got uh, four companies that I'm going to speak to, three from the second half of the list and one from the first. I'm going to start with uh, Mike Darricott of MGIS. How are you? Mike, Mike, uh, I don't know if you've got your mic. Oh, you've got your mic turned on now. Can you hear me okay? Are you landing the plane, Mike? Yeah, 
<laughs> good news, good news. Just one thing, because uh, I know I've got it wrong in the past. It's pronounced MGIS, isn't it? It is, yes. Okay, and uh, you're Mike Darricott. You're the, you're the brains behind the business. You're the managing director. In simple terms, if I had to describe what you do, would it be people use your surveying and space technology to help utility and infrastructure companies find their buried assets? That's what it is, isn't it, roughly? Yeah, I think that's certainly where we've really narrowed our focus in recent years is in working with critical infrastructure providers to uh, understand, A, where their assets are, and then secondly, make them more efficient in the in the recovery and, and sort of relocation of those assets, particularly when they really need to most, such as during a supply interruption or a big leak. Well, and it's it, the thing with tech companies is sometimes it can be hard to translate what they do and understand what they do to a layman. So I'll try and describe it. But one of your big customers is, is um, um, Northumbria Water Group. They've got 26,000 square, uh, sorry, 26,000 kilometres of water pipes, obviously under the ground for obvious reasons. If they need to find a leaking valve against the clock because they, they could be fined or they would be fined if there was an interruption in the supply, they use your technology to locate it to within one centimetre. That's correct, yes. Yeah. So we use a combination of satellite services. So you'll all be familiar with GPS. Everybody's got them on the smartphone. But we use GPS, which is very high accuracy. So it will locate something to within a centimetre or navigate to something within a centimetre. So if you're a water company, um, you need to ensure that if customers go off supply, we might have all felt the pain of that. Then you get them on supply as quickly as possible, particularly those more vulnerable customers. Mm -hmm. So um, if they've then got the technology to be able to locate those valves or locate the, the location of a burst, um, excavate it without a problem and then repair it, it means that they're not then going to be levied um, quite substantial fines, which are currently in play as part of the regulatory regime they exist in. Um, so you're talking about every minute over or every average minute over a three hour threshold can cost them up to three million pounds. Well, wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, you had a record break in 2020, turnover up 20 percent to 700,000 pounds. You're looking to double your workforce from 10 to 20 this year. You've clearly got ambitions to grow. That's correct. Um, I think it's it's quite exciting being in this region for one. having grown up here but to, to establish a business see it grow 20 percent year on year and then have the the opportunity and demand from your key customers to accelerate that growth it does two things one uh, it, it excites the team uh, you know that underpin this delivery but it also then means that we can keep building the team and we're very much focused on building that team through through local talent Mm. Um, just a final question to you, if I may, Michael. Is, uh, I know you're evaluating taking on further investment. How would you describe Liverpool's tech sector? And is there that appetite to, to, to people to invest? I think the appetite's there. Sometimes you find the challenge is just give, having that visibility and being aware of who to go to. And there's, there's a lot of great sounding boards. So what I've been doing more so recently, as I'm finding that I can work more on the business than in it, is then just just uncover those 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 local networks that can really advise and provide the sound and board, particularly either when you're going through business challenges like we are at the minute, or when you, you're trying to get yourself ready for accelerated growth through investments. Um, you need to really raise your profile, and, and things like this event are, are helping us do that. Yeah, thank you very much, Mike, and congratulations for making the list. I'm um, going to come to uh, our next uh, speaker. It's uh, Michael Heverin from Supply Well. It was due to have been, actually, his wife, Raina, but, uh, but Michael's uh, stepped in. Michael, thank you for doing that. But before you do, just to mention Mo Audelou, who is from Tech Nation, used to be one of our very talented reporters at Business Cloud as well. He says that my jokes have got better since the lockdown. That's what the lockdown does. The, the standard is a lot lower. The bar has been lowered. So if people are finding, if people are finding my jokes happy, I'm, I'm both delighted and surprised as well. Um, it, just in terms of yourself, Michael, a former professional footballer who once played, uh, once played at Anfield, and I think I'm right in saying you scored in front of the cop. Is that right? No, it, it hit the post. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Listen, listen. Accuracy was never my was never my strong point, and neither was yours as well. You know, you were a striker, but um, you help um, you help schools recruit, retain teachers via your proprietary tech platform, Supply World. Given the fact that the schools have been closed because of COVID, how has that impacted on your business, Michael? It's uh, th th this is a common misconception. I suppose schools have never closed; they've just operated differently. 
they've always been open. They've always still been educating. And there's always been a need for us to still support them in, in any way that we possibly can. Um, what what the, the the way that they've changed and the way that they're operating differently, it just meant that the way that we support them hasn't necessarily changed. It has gave us um, an, an opportunity to address certain areas within the business that we didn't necessarily have the time to focus on with any great detail. Um, as it is in a startup, there's always a million things to do. But fundamentally, it, it hasn't affected us too greatly. If anything, it's presented us with opportunities. And if anything, it's enabled us to, to kind of really solidify those relationships of supporting both supply teachers who've gone through a difficult time, but also the schools as well. well. One thing I do need to do, actually, just to remind people as well, there is an opportunity to vote. If you've not done it already, you can vote on which one of those companies you think is the best as well, just in case, uh, just in case you need a little nudge. Um, one thing I was going to ask you as well in terms of your business is that um, you, received, uh, you received some funding from Innovate UK. What are you using that for, Michael? That... Yeah, that funding was um, was fantastic for us because we 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 feel fundamentally that we're we're, we're leading the innovation in terms of, of technology within schools and how they engage with technology in schools, and we're fundamentally here to to address problems and to make make the life of school leaders, teachers, and, and how schools function just to make it easier for them to allow them to really uh, concentrate on what they should be doing, which is the quality of teaching and learning and, and looking after you know our young people. Um, the money that we received from, from the UK, it's allowing us to really kind of plough that into into our innovations to, to to solve some some critical problems that we're really excited about. I've got I've got good news and bad news, Michael. The good news is somebody watching today, and I think we had 170 people registering for today's event. But uh, somebody watching today has said how much they like your your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bad that's, news that's is the, the bad news is it's it's Gavin Shower at Mashbow, um, <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> which is yeah. see the jokes are getting better. Um, just um, what does it mean for you and Supply World to be included in the LCR Tech Climbers List 2021? It's fantastic to be surrounded by such good company. To be honest, we're we're really pleased that that you know we're, we're being recognised for the, the fantastic work at least that we think that we're doing, mm. um, and. It, it, it's great from a profile perspective as well in, in terms of, um, as, as Michael said before, in terms of raising funds and what that looks like. Um, it's, yeah, we're, we're thrilled to be on the list from being on, on the ones to watch um, last year to, to now being on the full list is, is great validation for the fantastic work that, that we're trying to achieve. Michael, congratulations to you and to Raina and to everybody else at Supply Well. Thanks very much. And, uh, and uh, Michael, of course, hit the post, <coughs> hit the post in front of the cop. Didn't quite score. But thank you very much for that, Michael. And as always, take care. Um, I'm now uh, going to be joined by Neil Norman, founder of M-Site. Uh, Neil is an interesting character. I spoke to him before today's event. Uh, when he was at school, he was told uh, that because he was very creative, he should uh, follow art. But he decided to follow mathematics and study mathematics at university and got a first class degree. Neil, how are you? I'm not too bad, Chris. How are you? Very good indeed. Very good indeed. But clearly not as well read as you are looking at all those books um, behind you. Um, M-Site, a fantastic business. I mean, it, it, we use this phrase a lot, journalists, you know, best kept secret, et cetera, et cetera. And I think M-Site falls into that category. Digital platform for workforce management in the construction sector. Historically, the construction sector doesn't always use tech well, but you've got more than one million people using your platform. What's your secret? Uh, we've been doing this a long time. And like many of the people um, that are assembled uh, on this call, um, you just keep beavering away at it and you hope one day your market wakes up and thinks that you're doing a great thing. And that seems to have happened for, for us. So, um, so yeah, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, you employ 80 people. I think you've got a turnover somewhere between 10 and 20 million pounds. You're looking for growth this year of 40%. How big do you think M-Site can become? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> It, it comes to the pandemic, I'm sure, like uh, many of the audience here, um, it's either helped or hindered. In our case, it's been a catalyst for change. You know, um, construction um, is, uh, is one of the last heavy industries to be digitalized. Um, and so whilst they've been talking about it, they're quite an old fashioned bunch of people. Um, and of the, the 200 billion they spend a year, 80 billion of that is on the workforce. And there's very little technology focused on trying to drive out efficiencies. Um, especially when you consider the, the safety factors and the, the heavy compliance they have to work to. So they've woken up to it for us. And the great thing about the UK is for all the complaints that you seem to hear in the press, um, it's got some pretty damn good 
uh, institutions and governance, and that gets exported around the world. So we see this as a, as a global problem We're already operating uh, uh, globally, and we, we see a lot of growth internationally and uh, in the UK itself. We've spoken once before, and uh, I asked you what the secret weapon was for Liverpool City region, and, uh, and you were very straight talking, it's fair to say. You said to me, it's the people. You said, it's the people, you know, because uh, Liverpool has got such a fantastic and breadth of, of, of people. Look, Liverpool's greatest asset is its people, um, its sense of humour, um, its resilience, um, uh, and I, I think that's been founded on, dare I say it, years and years of, of going through some tough times. Um, and that's produced a, a great set of people. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's mm. people are its greatest asset. And final question to you, if I may, uh, Neil, is, is you said it's really important for Liverpool, you know, to look forward, you know, not to look back, not to look over its shoulder, to look forward. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things I've observed is that, that Liverpool doesn't have the reputation of perhaps other cities. Um, and, and one thing that shouldn't be lost on, on anybody is ambition demands capital. Um, you know, there are lots of companies that kind of plateau at a certain level. And I, I think um, we've got to raise our game um, and showcase the ambition and the, the, the potential of you know, many of the companies that are on this call uh, uh, and beyond, uh, because it does have uh, amazing potential. And like anything, once it attracts a bit of attention, the capital will come. Uh, mm. And that's definitely needed to drive that growth. Neil, thank you very much for Vemsite. Fantastic business. Uh, final business I'm going to come to is uh, Dean Ward of Evoke Creative. The, uh, the, the, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that Evoke Creative were on the first list, but I deliberately wanted to come to, uh, to Dean at the end. Um, Dean, uh, sorry, Dean, I'm going to have to put my sunglasses on here because uh, what, I, I didn't realise you'd escaped and gone to Dubai and you're in a desert somewhere. What's happened? I don't know, why, I don't know what's going on with the background. It looks fine on the, um, it looks fine on the, the small display, sorry. Yeah, and absolutely. White no, absolutely, absolutely. It's a uh, very, very, very white decor, and you've got young children as well, so uh, they must create a right mess. But uh, Dean, we've known each other for a while, actually. To another call as well at fire. Uh, Dean, the last time we spoke, um, you had your hair cut really, really short. It was a DIY haircut, but it's looking a bit longer now. You've let it grow. <laughs> um, Evoke yeah. Creative, Evoke Creative, fantastic business. 14, 15 million pound turnover company. You make the uh, the self-service kiosks at McDonald's. And when I told my kids about that, that I knew the person who made these, they were well impressed. Um, but you've pivoted your business during the uh, pandemic because the retail and hospitality sector, for obvious reasons, took a big hit. Just tell us what you've done. Um, I mean, it's been a conscious effort for us um, kind of since we started to, to diversify. Uh, and we've adapted as a business from a design you know, design consultancy sort of 16, 17 years ago. So we're always open to change and to pivoting. Uh, it's just that, you know, on HA, you know, bringing new services in. So I think strategically over the past couple of years, we've, we've diversified what we did, uh, bringing in software, installation services. Uh, and th this was no different, really. So a lot of the groundwork that we'd put in you know, going back those years around some of the other interactions like customers want to have with brands has, has kind of enabled us to, to yeah, to, to remain in profit, to, to do some really good business. Um, fundamentally, things like drive-through systems are now in big demand. So we've seen a big, uh, a big uplift in orders for them. We've brought in some new clients as well, which has been fantastic. Um, but yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the other sort of technologies that we do, just around external signage, external kiosks. And um, thankfully, there's there's been an increased demand in that. Yeah, you, you're based you're based in the Wirral. Um, you, you've helped companies stay operational through COVID, through technology. Actually, you've seen a surge in demand for drive-through technology, click and collect, and customer returns, haven't you? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, as thankfully going into the lockdown, I mean, we've been working with McDonald's for yeah probably about six or seven years now doing predominantly their self-service kiosks, but we started doing their drive-through systems. And then just by chance at the start of last year, um, yeah, the, the drive-through demand obviously went through the roof as they, the, all the restaurants closed. So um, yeah, it's it's been fantastic. And then a lot of the conversations and discussions we're having now with retailers, hospitality, you know, cinema chains is around yeah, operational efficiency, all, you know, you mentioned click, click and collect and customer returns. There's been a huge uplift in online sales during the pandemic, which has resulted in a massive bottleneck for people wanting to return goods in stores. So, so yeah, for us as a business, th there's lots of new opportunities that we've seen during the past sort of 12 to 18 months. 
Yeah, yeah. And just to remind everyone as well, you know, when you do events like this, this is a hybrid event, you know, most of these events that I've been doing, I've been doing at home, you know, on my Zoom as well. So it's nice to be in a live studio with people socially distanced further away from me now. But, um, you know, it's about trying to create some noise as well. And there's some great, great comments as well on, uh, uh, you know, LCR Tech Climbers, you know, hashtag on Twitter as well. So I want to create some noise and tell people what a fantastic place Liverpool is and how many fantastic businesses there are. Um, you've got a very short period of time to vote for your favourite company of the 25 um, who are listed in the LCR Tech Climbers list. Which company will you be voting for, Dean? Oh, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it, it's a fantastic list and it just shows the strength of the region, to, to be honest, and, and the diversity, you know, across so many different sectors for like construction, education. It's, it, it, it's easier to kind of narrow down a favourite when it's within sort of more of a niche uh, market sector, but there's so much diversity and talent in the region. Um, okay. I'm going to find it quite hard. <laughs> no. Well, final question. Final, well, I would vote for myself if it was down to me, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> final question before I come to, uh, before I announce the audience's choice. Um, something you've done during the pandemic, which I think is really laudable, and lots of companies in Liverpool have done it. Makes Red have done something similar where they've helped people who maybe need a bit of a, uh, a leg up. You know, they've, uh, you've launched a charity donation kiosk for contactless donations at railway stations in the wake of falling charity donations. Tell us about that, Dean, if you would. Yeah, I mean, as a business, we we, we take our, our charity and our, and our sort of social impact really seriously, and we do a lot of a lot of events. And I think it's been a real knock this year not being able to do a lot of those things because it really drives the business together. Um, and yes, yeah, so we kind of have seen, and so the charities speaking to a lot of the charities, th their donations have gone down dramatically. You know, people just aren't in those areas. People aren't doing any fundraising. So we. What we've done is, is developed kind of a range of charity kiosks, which we're deploying. Uh, the first project that we're putting in is into national rail, so across some of the major networks uh, in the UK. Uh, and that just enables charities to, to, to get contactless payments quickly in, in high traffic areas. So it's just an interface uh, touchscreen system and then a contactless payment device on the bottom. Dean, just because I'm nosy, Dean, before I leave you, what room in the house are we actually are you dialing in from? This is like a loft. So I've got like a box on the top of my house. So yeah, it's not as bright when I look at myself <laughs> on the preview. It's just come through with like... It's exactly, uh, exactly. I, I, yeah. think, I, think, I think you're on a sunbed, Dean, but listen, that's just me. That's just <laughs> I me wish guessing. It was, yeah. Actually, Dean, thanks very much. Congratulations to you as well. Um, now, the producer has been whispering in my ear um, and I'm hoping what they're telling me is that everything's gone to plan um, because we're about to announce the winner. Uh, we're going to come to David Walters, a good friend of mine at uh, MSIF, who's going to reveal the winner of the audience's favourites from the uh, list of 25 fantastic companies in the, L in, in the LCR Tech Climbers list. Uh, David, well, I have to say, you're looking absolutely fantastic, you're looking very well dressed as always, smart. How are you, David? How are you keeping? Oh, very well, Chris. How are you? Can you very, hear me? Very good, very good. You know, and lots of people are waiting for this this answer. But but why was it important for MSIF to get involved in this? Because you're obviously, you know, you, you, you're based in Merseyside, you know, and when we're talking, you pretty much know every tech company going. So why, why did you want to get involved in this for, David? Well, I, we think there's some fantastic kind of innovators and uh, tech businesses across the region. There's something something very special happening, I think, in the LCR around tech. Um, you know, there is always this comparison between Manchester and, and the Liverpool city region. And, you know, as I say, you know, there's, there's, there's clearly um, some great momentum happening. And as investors, we want to support that. You know, it leads to job creation. Um, you know, we, and we, you, you know, we want to we want to support businesses on that on that journey. Um, I don't think we're necessarily known MSIF for for uh, tech. Um, and, you know, the, one of the reasons why we want to support this fantastic event is to let everybody know that, you know, we're here, we're looking to, we're looking to support some great tech businesses. And I think also just from a kind of investor's perspective, you know, COVID is clearly uh, changing the way that, that, that we kind of use digital technologies. And, you know, they are, you know, digital is part of the answer as we, as we sort of peer into the, into the world that we're about to enter. So, um, yeah, just absolutely delighted to be sponsoring this event really um, David just give me a sign if you know who the winner is of the uh, audience poll if you've not been informed just shake your head oh you know you know that's all I need let's keep it subtle absolutely share that information because there's people literally waiting on the the edge of their seats 
Well, I'm delighted to let you all know that um, eSign have uh, have been your choice for for the business that, um, uh, that 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 you're so interested. In. And and as you can see on that graph there, it's uh, it's it's by some distance. Yeah. Um, but you know, as a as a judge, it's been incredibly hard to kind of select select a business from the fantastic choices that we've got. Um, but yeah, eSign came out top. Well, congratulations to eSign, and thank you very much to yourself, David. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, congratulations to eSign. eSign are actually one of the companies who've been tweeting away, actually, using the hashtag, hashtag LCR Tech Climber. So congratulations to them. Congratulations, and thank you very much to David as well. That completes the fun. Um, and uh, by some quirk of fate, we're only three minutes over time, which is unusual for me. Um, thanks to all our partners. Thanks to the Growth Platform. Thanks to Brabner's. Thanks to MSIF. Invest Liverpool and to Gather as well. Thank you very much to the talented people at Zoot to my left and to uh, Virtuopo as well, who have been uh, who have been made this event possible as well. Any mistakes are down to me. I don't take any of the credit for the good stuff. That's down to those clever people over there. And also a special thanks to Active Profile, who who quite literally have gone above and beyond as well to make this event happening. And uh, they've been doing so much behind the scenes as well. Thank you very much to Active Profile. And I'm just going to say, uh, Frankie Hutton, you have been fantastic. Thank you. She'll absolutely hate that, which is the reason why I said it for as well. We are going to be publishing a report from today uh, on the LCR Tech Climbers 2021 website, you know, so you can find out all about this as well. And uh, keep an eye out for Business Cloud tomorrow. Business Cloud's website will be publishing both lists, both the ones to watch list and the uh, LCR Tech Climbers list 2021. So that remains, that's all that remains for me is to wish you uh, a safe passage. Thank you very much. Stay safe. My name is Chris McGuire and my name will always be Chris McGuire. Thank you very much.